Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, I've got another board partner RTX 3080 graphics card review for you. And this time I'll be checking out MSI's Gaming X Trio. This is MSI's most premium, their, their flagship RTX 3080 graphics card. And as such, it is a, a little pricey, not too bad. It's $760 US. At least that's how much it'll cost at some undetermined time in the future when capacity increases beyond what looks like just a couple of cards per week. Anyway, supply woes aside for now, let's just put that there. Let's let's just assume that we live in a world where you can actually purchase an RTX 3080. If that's the case, you can buy this graphics card. Hopefully at some point in time, you'll be able to buy it. But let's just say you can buy it right now, should you? Is the MSI Gaming X Trio any good? Is it worth buying? So to answer that question, we'll be, of course, testing it in things like gaming performance, thermal performance, power consumption, overclocking headroom, all the stuff that we normally look at. And for comparison, we'll be comparing it to NVIDIA's own found edition model, as well as the excellent ASUS Tough Gaming. Okay, so let's start by taking a look over the MSI Gaming X Trio graphics card. As you'd, uh, well, as you can quite plainly see, this is quite a massive graphics card. So it measures 323 millimeters long. So it is quite long end to end. You'll want to make sure that it'll fit in your case before you buy it. It is 140 millimeters tall and it is 56 millimeters wide. So quite a thick card here. It will take up three expansion slots. So again, be aware of that, but that'll be the case for pretty much all RTX 3080 graphics cards. Uh, but those dimensions do make it slightly larger than the ASUS Tough Gaming model. As I mentioned a moment ago, we did review that recently. So if you missed it, perhaps check that video out as well. Uh, but yeah, slightly bigger and it is also heavier. So this thing weighs 1,565 grams and that makes it 13% heavier than the ASUS Tough Gaming. So this thing is a big boy indeed. Design-wise, it is a very nice looking graphics card from all angles, and MSI has gone with a more typical plastic fan shroud, whereas ASUS crafted an aluminium shroud for the tough gaming. While I do much prefer the aluminium, the MSI design should be just as functional, and as I said, it does look quite good. Now, MSI are marketing this as their tri Frozer 2 cooler with Torx fan version 4. Basically, all you need to know is that it packs three 90mm fans, and unlike the Tough Gaming, all three fans spin in the same direction. ASUS also has what they call Axial Tech fans, which feature a connecting ring around the edge of the fan blades, and they claim that this increases downward air pressure. I'm not really sure about any of that, but what I can say is it does greatly strengthen the fan blades, and that is a good thing. Unfortunately, I have to admit I have broken the odd fan blade or two in my time by accidentally running a wire into them or even my finger while they're spinning. Bit of a goofball move I know, but it can happen when you're tinkering with systems on a regular basis. Anyway, the point is there's virtually no chance that the fan blade will snap on the ASUS Axial Tech fans. And I mention this because MSI now has a similar design, which sees the blades linked up in pairs, which will greatly strengthen them. Again, they claim it's about improving thermal performance by improving air pressure by 20%, which it may well do, but I'm more interested in the improved durability of the actual fan blades. Now, the other thing we have to talk about, of course, is the LED lighting effects, and there's quite a bit going on here. The top side of the card features a few light zones around the central fan. Then we have the MSI logo on the outer edge and a light bar because you know all graphics cards need a light bar. I am being sarcastic, of course, but if you're into lighting effects, then admittedly, this card does look very good. Now, around the back, we find what MSI claim is a graphene backplate, which is a really interesting choice. MSI claims that their graphene backplate is four times stronger and 20 times more efficient at heat dissipation than a plastic backplate, which is a Pretty ridiculous, a bit of a stupid claim in my opinion, as plastic backplates are garbage and really shouldn't exist. What we actually want to know is what kind of advantage a graphene backplate offers over a more traditional aluminium backplate. But I'll be honest, it looks and feels like plastic, which really isn't a good thing, and worse still, it's by no means rigid. The Tough Gaming, for example, featured a really thick aluminium backplate, which strengthened the card, and it was very difficult to flex. This thing though might as well be made of plastic. I suspect this is a mixture of graphene and plastic. It certainly doesn't transfer heat as quickly as aluminium. So it seems like a bit of a strange marketing gimmick to me. And personally, I would have much rather seen a thick aluminium backplate here. 
Now moving around to the IO end of the card, we find the same basic configuration of the FE model. So there's just a single HDMI 2.1 port and three DisplayPort 1.4A ports. That is a little disappointing given that we got two HDMI 2.1 ports on the Tough Gaming, but this probably won't be an issue for most gamers. Okay, so that'll do it for our look around the Gaming X Trio. Time to pull it apart and the teardown procedure is extremely straightforward. There's just 17 screws in total holding the card together and all but two of them are found on the back side of the card with the other two in the IO bracket. Anyway, with all of those screws unscrewed, the heatsink can now be removed and unlike the Tough Gaming, we're really just looking at one massive heatsink here. There's a very small heat spreader covering a few of the capacitors, but it's not intended to cool them, rather it's a support bracket designed to protect the PCB from bending under the weight of that massive cooler. Looking at the heatsink and fans, here we find the bulk of the weight as this combo weighs in at 1009 grams. And design wise it is quite different to what we found on the ASUS Tough Gaming, mostly because ASUS went with a two piece cooling solution. They also included an extremely smooth nickel plated copper base plate, whereas MSI have gone with a direct touch copper heat pipe design, which typically does work quite well, but contact with the GPU die will be inferior to what we saw with the Tough Gaming. For example, you can physically feel the gaps between the heat pipes, and while MSI has done quite a good job of creating the smoothest possible contact surface you can with this method, it's just not as good as a solid copper base in that regard. In total, there are seven nickel plated copper heat pipes. The outer three pipes on either side measure six millimeters in diameter, while the middle pipe is eight millimeters in diameter. And this provides a larger contact patch across the middle of the GPU die. For cooling the GDDR6 memory and the VRM components, MSI has strategically placed some aluminium plates, and this is a very common design choice that should work reasonably well. Moving around to the so-called graphene backplate, here we find a number of thermal pads connecting it to hotspots on the PCB. So that is nice to see, but as I said earlier, I think I would have much rather see a nice thick aluminium backplate here. But of course I will throw some K-Type thermocouples on the PCB and compare the Gaming X Trio to the Tough Gaming. Now over to the PCB, we find a 295mm long by 128mm tall PCB which is much larger than the PCB of the Tough Gaming and as a result many of the components are much further spread out which could aid in cooling performance. That said, closely surrounding the massive die are 10 GDDR6X memory chips. However, here the VRM components are much further from the GPU, and in total we find 16 power stages, four fewer than that of the Tough Gaming. So, whereas ASUS went with a 14 phase power delivery system for the GPU using 16 55 amp power stages, MSI has a 13 phase power delivery using 13 50 amp power stages. ASUS also used a 4 phase 55 amp power stage configuration for the GDDR6 memory, whereas MSI are going with a 3 phase 50 amp power stage configuration. Now, for those of you wondering, the reference spec calls for a 13 plus 3 power phase design featuring 50 amp alpha and omega semiconductor power stages. So it does appear as though the Gaming X Trio is using a base spec for power delivery. That said, they are feeding power into the card with not two, but rather three eight pin PCIe power connectors, which frankly to me just seems unnecessary given that Tough Gaming used just two connectors and it features a more robust power delivery system. The Gaming X Trio also lacks dual BIOS support, a feature that is found on the Tough Gaming model, so that is super disappointing, and not because I want to see the quiet mode included or anything like that, but rather because it is a valuable feature that'll come in handy should you mess up flashing your VBIOS at any point in time. So if you make that mistake with the Gaming X Trio, then you'll have to RMA the card, but with the Tough Gaming you can simply toggle over to the secondary BIOS and recover from there. Now, in terms of clock specifications, MSI lists a core clock frequency of 1815 MHz, which is a 5% boost over the 1730 MHz default spec. The GDDR6 memory, though, has been left at 19 gigabits per second, so we're just looking at a typical mild factory overclock here. All that said, let's move on to see what clock speeds this model maintains when under load. For my GeForce 30 series graphics card reviews, I'll be using Show of the Tomb Raider for all my stress testing, and we'll be reporting the maximum temperature seen after 30 minutes of gameplay. This saw the Gaming X Trio peak at 71 degrees in a 21 degree room inside the Corsair Obsidian 500D, fully populated with fans. That's a seven degree drop in temperature when compared to Nvidia's Founders Edition model, but eight degrees hotter than the Tough Gaming. 
though do note the fans were spinning quite a bit slower. In fact, out of the box, we're looking at a fan speed of just 1300 RPM, making the Gaming X Trio extremely quiet. The typical core clock speed seen during our testing was 1935 MHz, and under the same conditions, that's a 5% increase over the Founders Edition model. This saw power consumption increase by 7% from 323 watts with the FE model to 344 watts with the Gaming X Trio. Now, for overclocking, with the limits reached, we saw a peak operating temperature of just 72 degrees, again with the fan spinning at just 1300 RPM. The overclock saw the cores operate at up to 2 GHz, and the memory also hit 20.6 gigabits per second, so the same result we achieved with the Tough Gaming. Finally, when overclocked, the card sucked down 353 watts. Okay, so let's move into the benchmark graphs. As usual, we'll be testing with our AMD Ryzen 9 3950X GPU test rig with 32GB of DDR4 3200CL14 memory. The latest drivers available at the time of testing have been used, and for this one we have just a few select games to look at. I'm really not going to spend that much time going over all the gaming results, as the performance is virtually identical to what we saw with the ASUS Tough gaming model, both out of the box and when manually overclocked. So in Death Stranding at 1440p, you're looking at a couple of extra frames over the FE model, and it's the same story at 4K. Again, we're looking at about a 6% performance increase over the FE model in Rainbow Six Siege, while my manual overclock did little to boost performance further, and similar margins were again seen at the 4K resolution. Then in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're looking at a measly 3% boost over the FE model, taking the average frame rate at 1440p to 159fps, and with our manual overclock, we got all the way up to 163 FPS. Then at 4K, we see another 3% increase for the Gaming X Trio over the FE model, so you're looking at anywhere from a 3-6% to performance boost with these factory overclocked models. Now, here's a look at the out-of-the-box thermal performance using the stock fan profile. So, for the ASUS Tough Gaming, that meant a fan speed of 1900 RPM, and then for the MSI Gaming X Trio, just a 1300 RPM fan speed. This saw the Gaming X Trio run up to 9 degrees hotter, but all measured points were below 80 degrees. So it really doesn't matter, and I think I prefer the out-of-the-box experience you get with the MSI card. That said, the Tough Gaming does have a quiet BIOS mode, so you can easily switch to that for a similar experience. Now, if we normalise the operating volume to 40 decibels, the Gaming X Trio and Tough Gaming end up being very similar. Here we're looking at an identical GPU temperature of 63 degrees, with just a 2-3 to three degree advantage in favour of the Tough Gaming for stuff like the VRM and GDDR6 memory temps, though both were exceptional. Interestingly, the rear side of the PCB behind the GPU was 6 degrees hotter on the Gaming X Trio, but overall both did run very cool, so it's not really an issue. So there you have it, the MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio. It is certainly a very nice graphics card, though I can't help but feel MSI could have done a bit better here, especially after having recently reviewed the Tough Gaming. I am thankful actually that I started with the Tough Gaming because it is an excellent RTX 3080 graphics card and it really did deliver the goods, especially at the $700 price point, at least for the base model. Uh, on that note, I did review the OC version, which currently costs $750 US. Uh, the exact same cooler, though, is used by the $700 model, so if you can, I would just get that. Of course, right now, you can't really buy either, so yeah, that's, that's a whole different problem which we've sort of touched on already. But even if there is, say, a bidding process, there's virtually no overclocking headroom with these RTX 3080 graphics cards anyway, so the base clocks are fine and it makes little sense to pay a 7% premium for maybe 6% more performance at best. That said, you can probably just extract that performance anyway via a manual overclock with the base model. The Gaming X Trio, on the other hand, doesn't have a cheaper non-overclocked option. It's $760 US, and frankly, I'd rather just have the base model Tough Gaming for $700 US. Of course, again, neither product is in stock anywhere around the world right now, and we have no idea when availability will improve and what pricing will look like over the coming weeks and months. In short, MSI's Gaming X Trio is certainly a good quality RTX 3080 graphics card with no real flaws to speak of. That said, it would have been better had it included maybe a dual BIOS feature, a thick aluminium backplate, and or more display outputs. Overall, I'm happy with how the card's set up. The out-of-the-box experience is great, and when tuned for uh, normalized testing, it is comparable with the Tough Gaming. And then we see pricing at $760 US, which isn't ridiculous, 
It is comparable to the $750 US you'll pay for the Tough Gaming OC, though again, I would recommend uh, trying to get the non-OC model, which comes in at $700 US. That just seems like an exceptionally good deal to me. Anyway, that is going to do it for our MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trail review. If you enjoyed this content, then please make sure to give it a like. Also subscribe because we have much more RTX 3080 related content coming up on the channel. And we also have Patreon. So if you're interested in that, check it out. We do monthly live streams for our Patreon members. We have an exclusive Discord chat where you can get on there and chat with Tim and myself and the rest of the awesome Harbour Unbox community. We have behind the scenes videos, Q&As, all that kind of stuff. So if you are interested, then check it out. Link is in the video description. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.